Hey everyone, welcome to my channel. This is just a, another very dreek evening here in Scotland. So today we're doing something a little bit differently. Um, I spend a lot of time working with Coral Painter and I also spend a lot of time working with Art Rage on my tablet. So today I thought I'd do um, a little something that I did on my tablet while sitting at the concert hall in Perth waiting on the husband to finish work and this is a watercolour painting of some flowers which I borrowed from an advert for a florist off of Facebook um, something about just the composition of the flowers just kind of caught my eye and I thought well why not who doesn't love flowers so Working in Art Rage with watercolour is um, slightly different than Coral. Obviously, Coral Painter has a lot more controls. Um, you can control the paper and also the water flow with water mapping. And you can also decide if you want to paint on wet on wet and remain um, wet so you can keep the paper wet. Or you can tick a box and it will instantly dry as you work. Um, there is similar controls to this in Art Rage, slightly different on the fact that for the majority of it, it is classed as wet. So, two main brushes I use in Art Rage for watercolour work is a watercolour brush, um, which is called Delicate on Dry. And it just has this really nice effect of it's uh, got a fair amount of thinner in it and obviously if you work with watercolour in real life, you'll know very much so that the whole point of watercolour is that you layer and layer and layer and then layer some more um, because obviously there's just you, you can't have enough layers on watercolour and that's the same effect in Art Rage using the Delicate. You can use the wet on wet brush um, and obviously if you use it straight as it is on the presets you will get a very thick, um, very non-diluted, very pigmented effect on the paper whereas if you use the delicate on dry you tend to find that the edges of where you put the paint, where your paint marks are tend to be um, very pigmented whereas the middle tends to be more translucent so a bit like if you have slightly too much water on your brush so I use that brush for most of the work Obviously, I resize it up to anywhere between 300 and 500% in order to make the bigger brush. Um, and you can, with very light strokes, if you're using very touch sensitive stylus, get very small uh, dabs, which is what I did in this with the flowers. Um, whether you're using a 300% size brush or a 500% size, 500 brush, either or, it doesn't seem to matter. Um, you can resize it down because that way if you then suddenly go too heavy you're not going to get a huge splodge but I kind of like the fact that you can occasionally get the huge splodge um, it's a bit more kind of almost realistic if you tend to be like me sometimes I can be a bit heavy handed with my watercolours I prefer to use a larger brush that can have a nice point on it if I'm very delicate with it but of course that does tend to lead to mistakes or as is the case in this house um, the cat coming to join in with the painting and constantly nudging my hand resulting in large splodge sometimes they can artistically be wonderful and sometimes they can ruin an entirely good piece of painting and you have to start again usually with the cat shut out of the room the second brush I tend to use a lot in Art Rage and you can see especially in this painting is a blender. Once you've got the watercolour down on the paper, if you want that wet on wet look where it blooms and it spreads across the paper and it blends really well with other colours, you want to be able to use a blender that is going to give you that sort of look. If you look really carefully and like literally hold the paper up to your face you can see that um, when you add lots of water or there's lots of water already on the paper and you're using very very much wet on wet the pigment is the pigment parts of the paint tend to spread out in tiny tiny little cracks into the grain of the paper and the tooth of the paper 
you can achieve that by using the Harsh Chaos Blender um, because it does something very similar. It feathers the edges. And when it feathers the edges, it pushes the paint out into these little cracks. Now, one of the nice things about Art Rage is the fact that you can use grained paper um, in a similar way to grained paper and flow mapping in Coral Painter. However, it's much, much, much easier in Art Rage than it is in Coral just because they simplified it. So rather than having to worry about flow maps and which direction you want your paint to go in and you know how wet and how runny it is to how much it flows, Art Rage it has the grain. I do show this um, in some of my other videos, especially with pastel work, because I love doing pastel in Art Rage because the grain shows through the pastel on the paper so beautifully. It looks just like you're working with normal sanded paper. I work with pastels um, as a traditional medium. I love the feel of textured paper. Obviously you can't get that with a tablet or a computer, um, but the effect and the look is still the same. So we've got these two brushes. I'm basically, from the start, I'm using a huge version of the Delicate on Dry and then smacking down my palest colours, making the background and then blending it out with the same size brush so that it looks pretty much like I've absolutely sodden the paper with water and then added my, my paint. Then, in theory, if I'd done this traditionally, I would have sat here and waited ages for it to dry or taken out my heat gun. Uh, in this case, obviously, being tradition, being digital media, you don't have to do that, so you can just crack on. So switch to another layer, because one of the things you don't want to be doing in Art Rage is constantly painting over the top of the same layers. If you do that, all you do is get a muddy mess. Art Rage is great for the fact that you can blend on the same layer just by using the brush. So the Harsh Chaos Blender is brilliant but you can also use the brush. It's not quite the same because it's more smooth, so you get a smooth blending. But the Harsh Chaos, obviously, you get the feathered blending on the edges. When you've done that, and you want to then paint on top, so your next layer, you really, in Art Rage, you really need to be putting in a new layer. You can't just put it on top, otherwise it just blends straight away with the layer that you've currently got down, and it just dissolves into a mess. It does tend to look really, really muddy when you do things like that. And that's not really the effect you want to be going for, unless that's intentional, but in most cases it's not. I actually have four layers in this painting. The first layer is my background layer, which was the really pale yellows and some pale greens, completely blended out, covered the whole paper. Then I started on the next layer, which was all of the greens and foliage, um, which is the kind of background foliage that you'd fade off into the background that you don't really want to be completely focusing on. Then the next layer on top of that was the base layer for the flowers. And then the final layer after that was actually all the details, so the more kind of front colours for the flowers um, and also the front kind of main parts of the foliage, bringing it a bit more into a 3D effect. The nice thing about Art Rage is that as you work, obviously, you've got your colour picker on the side and your tools on the other side and it's really easy to kind of see what it is you've got selected and also what you're doing. This is only one of several of my uh, layouts. I actually have three. This is a general layout that I use um, on my tablet because this is a nice easy layout and it gives me a large amount of screen space. On a computer, I actually go more for a design style layout. It's very similar to um, coral painter layouts and the fact that everything tends to be in sidebars and menus with shortcut buttons just because that's easier to do with a computer and a stylus and tablet than it is actually just to do on the tablet like this one. Um, this painting was completely luckily done on a Samsung Galaxy S2 um, 
I've added a, a card for extra memory. Apart from that, the files are actually very slim. When I do paintings on the tablet, I tend to also ask it to record the script. And that's what you can see in the bottom corner by the painting, where it says playing script and playing. What this does is basically it records every digital action that you do. Anything from what tool you select to where the cursor is on the page to where you're putting down your brush marks or to whatever settings you're doing. It records that as a, well, computer script basically. Um, and it records this script in a long, long list and saves it as a file that you can then play back later. Now, that's really, really handy for several reasons. First of all, when you're working on a tablet, obviously you've got limited resources, limited amount of space on the tablet, and also most tablets tend to have, um, you know, they're, they're, they've got good processors nowadays, but they're still not up to the same sort of speed that you would get on a computer. You can actually paint, and that's what I did with this one in particular, in a lower resolution file. So for example, I painted this in um, an A4 size piece of paper, uh, but a 72 DPI, so dot per inch uh, resolution. That's fine, obviously, but if I want to make it uh, printable, to make art prints and cliché prints from it, um, it would need to be in a high resolution. The advantage of having the script is I can upload the script to my computer, and then as per what we're seeing here in the video, I've gone to File, loaded the script, and hit Play. And it basically plays it back. Now, when it comes to hitting Play, it gives you the options to either keep in the previous size or amend. What I did in this case was I amended the paper size um, and the painting area size to the same size. So it was an, another A4 piece of paper, but this time at 300 dpi. The script will play back over 300 dpi, make absolutely no difference, but what it leaves me with is a image file which is much more suitable for printing um, in professional papers and with professional printers. Something you wouldn't be able to do in a lot of other programs but is exceptionally good with ArtRage, especially as I was doing this while drinking a hot chocolate at the Perth Concert Hall. Not normally the best place, but I do tend to spend a lot of time there, and they're not really strange to the fact I was often sit there and paint. Often not a lot, it's a lot more people, um, and things are going on in the coffee shop there, but this particular image caught my eye. It's spring, or really it's coming up to spring, and we've had freezing cold weather, then we've had unseasonably hot weather, and now we're back to rain, so I've not really seen much of the flowers, just a few crocuses coming out. So I'm kind of looking forward to when I've got a few more flowers out and about so I can paint some more flowers. I do like painting flowers, especially in watercolour. I think they lend themselves to watercolour being a lot more flowy, a lot more blendable. You can kind of almost dreamlike really in some respects. Art Rage itself is an absolutely excellent program for this sort of thing, especially um, on doing these sorts of paintings. It doesn't recreate watercolour, or at least the look of watercolour, as well as coral. Um, coral has a lot more ability to do that just because of the programming behind it. Um, but Art Rage still does an absolutely fantastic job of recreating um, the effect and the look of watercolour and out of Art Rage and Procreate I would probably say I prefer to do watercolour in Art Rage than Procreate just because it's easier to use and also the marks and the way it goes down on the paper is um, it just has a nicer effect and a nicer look it's a lot more delicate Art Procreate I tend to find um, that the marks tend to look a lot more heavy-handed, which is great for those that tend to cope with that, but um, as I do a lot of watercolour flowers, not really great heavy-handed work and flowers and delicate 
don't tend to really go well together. I've got quite a few um, projects coming up and I hope you guys will stick with us and want to see. Obviously I'm here to answer questions as well so if you've got anything please feel free to put your uh, questions in the comments and I will get back to you um, and answer them as best I can. I will always recommend um, trying anything. There's so many things out there. There are free versions of Art Rage um, and some demo versions of Procreate which you can use um, without having to pay but obviously it limits you to the number of layers. The actual paid version of Art Rage is only about £4 so it's pretty cheap and I would definitely say it's worth getting. Anyway, I love you guys to bits. I really hope you've enjoyed listening to me just kind of ramble on a wee bit. Um, and also appreciate the quick study I've done of these flowers. Just something simple just to kind of give you an idea of some of the looks and effects you can actually achieve while using watercolour and art rage. I highly recommend giving it a go. And also if you like this video please remember to give us a thumbs up and also if you want to see more of my work and my videos and I will be putting a lot more up now I've got a lot more time on my hands because I'm now working from home then please hit the subscribe button and uh, we'll be hoping to see you more and more on this channel. Um, good night you guys and uh, enjoy!